There are many different addition strategies and ways that we can solve addition problems. I'm going to cover just a few of them today and show you them with our expression here of 146 plus 88. I'm gonna start by showing you the count on strategy. Sometimes we even call this the number line strategy or the open number line strategy. When children are first starting to learn to add, they start by counting all. So this is the first step. So if I start by saying what's five plus three, young children will often start right over here and start by counting with one. So they'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight here. Now, as adults, we know that I already know I have five fingers. I can just start on six for this finger, right? That's called the count on. So first children learn by counting all, then they learn by counting on, then lastly they use something called the break apart method. And this is where they can say things like, well if I know eight plus six is 14, then I know I can take two from the six, make the eight a 10 and get 10 plus four. So they're really manipulating numbers at that point. So again, children start by counting all, then they count on, then they break apart numbers and use that to do their addition strategies. So the beauty of the count on strategy is you can use an open number line to show your work. Now you might be thinking, what's an open number line? It's basically a line where I call them hops, where we hop on it and they're not proportionate. So a giant hop could be five or it could be one so they label it. I'm gonna first start by taking 88 and starting there. Know that you can start at 146 or 88, so either add end. So I'm gonna start at 88 and I'm going to hop 146. Now, there are some students that might think about um, hopping to get to a friendly number. There are some students that might think about hopping in terms of, well, there's 100 there, so let me hop that first. But know that everyone's version of friendly is different, and this is what the beauty of the strategy is. So you're gonna see lots of different answers. What I wouldn't wanna see, and sometimes I see this in adults, not children, by the way, is things like, I'm gonna hop six and give me 94. That's not really like how a child would think because they're trying to get to a friendly number. They're trying to get to the easiest, the path of least resistance. So I'm gonna guess a lot of children would start by adding 100. So let me do that here. And I'm going to put a plus 100 so that I know that that's what I did. And I know that I now have 188. I know that if I'm thinking as an adult, I can break it apart by place value um, and add 40, but I'm also thinking that that's not really easy for me to add by 40 because I don't know what 188 plus 40 is. Um, I know that I've still got 46 to go here. I think I'm gonna get to a friendly number. So I think I'm gonna only hop two to get to 190. So now I've got 44 to still go. Okay, well now um, I can hop 10 and get to 200 really easily. So I'm gonna hop 10. Again, notice that my hops are not proportional and that's okay. Now I'm going to be at 200 and instead of 44, I now have 34 left of my 146. Um, so now I could easily, actually, I could easily just hop 34 at this point because I know that 200 plus 34 is 234. So I'm going to ha hop that last bit and I know that my answer is 234. Let me show you starting at 146 and going that direction. The beauty of this strategy is that everyone's answer is gonna look totally different and that's perfectly fine. So now I need to add 88 for my hops. I'm counting on 88, if you will. Um, so I'm looking and I definitely, even six plus eight is hard for me. I'm a second grader. This is really difficult. So I think I'm just gonna hop four to get started so that I get to a friendlier number. So I know that that will get me to 150. Remember, I've got 88 to go. So now I only have 84. Good job, I can hear you in the background. All right, now I know I can get to another friendly number and that's by hopping 50 and I can get to 200. So that will leave me with 34 and then again I could hop 34 and now I get my same answer of 234. Again there's so many different ways that you're going to see even this problem done in practice amongst your students which is why it is super cool to watch. Now let me show you the second strategy which we refer to as partial sums. This is really great for mental addition. Here's what's cool about partial sums. Chances are high 
You already do this one, you just didn't know it was called partial sums. Uh, so let's take a look. Again, we've got 146 plus 88 still. Now we know the answer is 234. We can do this mentally by breaking apart our numbers by place value. By the way, this is only one way that you can do partial sums. I'm going to show you another way in just a minute. Instead of thinking of this as 146 plus 88, I'm going to think of this as 100 plus, I know there's no hundreds in 88, so that's going to give me 100. Then I've got 40 plus 80. Here's where the make a 10 strategy comes in really handy. Because if I know that 4 plus 8 uh, is 12, then I know that 40 plus 80 is 120. Just to refresh your memory, the make a 10 strategy goes like this. I can take I see that this eight is two away from 10, so I'm gonna take two away from the four, make this a 10, and now I can easily add two plus 10, which is 12. So I know that 40 plus 80 is 120. Last, I have my one, so I have six plus eight. Again, I can use the make a 10 strategy, take two from here, so this is gonna be four, this becomes 10, four plus 10 is 14. Now I can add these all together. I get 100 plus 120 is 220, plus 10 more, 230. I'm using the count on even in my head. Plus four is 234. I just showed you the partial sum strategy broken apart by place value. However, I want you to know that's not always the best way to do it. Let me show you what I mean. For this example, I actually wanna use a different number because I think it will help to illustrate my point a little bit better. When I think about the expression 52 plus 18, some students are going to want to break this 18 apart into 8 and 10. And when they do that, they can actually, again, make a 10 strategy, know that 52 plus 8 is 60, 60 plus 10 gives them 70. So this is going to be a lot easier for some students than saying 50 plus 10 is 60, 2 plus 8 is 10, 60 plus 10 is 70. Again, lots of different ways that you can break numbers apart. Um, nothing is really right or wrong. It's really interesting to hear students thinking and reasoning as they explain why they chose the numbers that they did. The strategy of breaking numbers apart either by place value or sometimes like I did here with my model, um, we sometimes call that the break apart strategy. Just to give you a better idea, sums means the answer to an uh, addition expression. So partial sums is really saying it's breaking the numbers apart in a way. Um, but just so you know, that is kind of what you might hear in practice for that sort of mathematical model. The last strategy I want to show you today is called modified add-ins or the compensation model. For this strategy, I want to write my numbers vertically. This is just easier for me. So I'm going to write 146 plus 88. And what I'm thinking about is, hmm, I wish that this top number was a friendlier number. Like say it was 150, then I wouldn't have to carry so many times or keep regrouping, right? So um, let me change it. So I'm gonna add four, and I now have 150 plus 88. And now I can easily add those. I have eight, 150 plus 80 gives me 230, so I have 238. However, remember I added on this four, so now I need to take away that four. So I'm going to subtract it out from the end, and I get 234 for my answer. What's cool about this strategy is you can actually do it to both add-ins. So let me show you what that looks like. I went ahead and changed our problem just a little bit just so I could show you how modifying add-ins in some cases really proves helpful. So I've got 146 plus 48. Again, I'm gonna make my top add-in a friendlier number by adding four. And then I see that I'm only two away from 50. So I'm going to also add two there. This is going to give me 150 plus 50. Hmm, nice, see what I did there. Okay, this is really easy to do in my head. So now I know I have 200, but remember, I still need to subtract out this four plus two, which is six. So I'm gonna subtract six, which gives me 194 for my answer. 
I hope this video is giving you some new ideas on how you can solve addition problems, even in your own life. Uh, in college, I worked at a beauty salon and I was constantly having to do the math behind tips for the hairstylist. And so people would come up to me and they would say, can you add on a 20% tip? And I had to learn how to do that mental math. And then I did it over and over and practiced a ton and got really good at percentages. So you too can be great at math with enough time put into it and some great strategies. So I want to really recommend that you try some of these strategies, force yourself to use some of them, and see if you like them. You know, it sure beats the air edition, you know what I'm talking about, where you do this, and then you're like, okay, I think I carry the one. Oh shoot, but what was that number? You've done this before, right? It's not a good strategy. So try some of these strategies. I think you're going to uh, have a lot of fun as you experiment with them.